Hi everyone. Okay, I thought, uh, here I'll get my full face in there. Oh, let's turn the camera a little bit. Okay, so what I thought I would do is talk a, a little bit about the orange today. We're going to um, detailing and detailing the rest of the painting, okay? Because I have another video that I'm going to be posting um, hopefully by tomorrow, Thursday at the latest. Fr maybe Friday at the latest. Um, I'm preparing for it. It's a, it's a varnishing video and it's one that I'm going to shoot outside. And um, yeah, so I wanted to do the best I could to show you all the different layers that uh, you'll be dealing with if you decide to varnish. Okay. Meanwhile, let's go back to our project for this week. And I guess this Friday means that's it, huh? Um, I always tell my students that you guys can, you always have my email address. And um, if you don't, it's Joyce Faulkner at Gmail or Joyce at JoyceFaulkner.com. And um, I want you to feel free to write me. Sometimes um, I, some students don't feel that they're done with their projects and I encourage them not to rush through it. They can just go ahead and send me a JPEG and I'll go ahead and critique it at, you know, whenever they're ready to have me take a look. So that's just a little inside tip. Okay, let's turn the camera away from Joyce and put it on the star of the show. That would be the orange juice squeezer. So I know some of you were having a hard time finding, well, maybe not some of you, one comment that came in. Um, she was having a hard time finding her way through the orange juice squeezer. And um, I know that I did not do you all justice with that um, reference photo. That was uh, my bad and I apologize for that. The when I set up the still life, it was for the book, and it was a long, long, long time ago, back in the days when we used slides and not digital. So um, I do have this; it's on it's on a slide. So I was trying to uh, eliminate having to find the slide and then find someone that um, develops slides. And I it might be an easy process, might be a hard process. I'm not sure. Um, however. Uh, that's why you got the photo reference that was a little different from the um, line drawing and so on and so forth. However, you kind you all could see what you were doing and, and it seemed like you were working well with it. So let me back up and let's go back to the orange and let's talk about the the pulp area right up in here and you know let's talk about how orange can we get it. Um, when you slice an orange in half, it is, um, I'm going to pull this in just a little bit closer, right there. There you go. I'm going to turn this like this. And here. I have to find a spot where I can paint. You can see. Um, as you can see, this is taped down a 300, well, it's 300 paper. I don't know if you can see that. But it is taped to a, you know, piece of, um, foam core board and um, anyway it's just for demo purposes only so um, and this is was my paper of choice and I can't remember why I think it was because I was teaching a class and it just was easier this way or maybe who knows who knows why <laughs> okay here's my palette here's my palette okay I have Permanent Alizarin Crimson, and that's this one right here. Permanent Rose and Transparent Yellow. And what I like to do is like start mixing up a nice variety of um, oranges. And I'm going to mix it flat, and I'll show you. Um, the, transpar uh, the Transparent Yellow goes with everything. You know, it just it works really, not goes with everything, but it, it works well with all my pigments, um, all the Winsor Newton pigments. Some of the Winsor Newton pigments, yellows, they're, you know, they're a little more um, opaque. So you have to be kind of careful when you're playing with the yellows. Um, okay, so look at, I have this nice little variety of color. 
stay within, you're going to stay within this, these, this range of pigments right here. You don't want to pull in a, a third or fourth color. And unless you've already incorporated in, of course you can use four colors. Okay. Now, this is going to be a um, little bit of a wet into wet technique. And what I suggest for you to do is find a nice round brush, a uh, small tip, you know, like this one is a, um, this is a five. So the tip is, um, well, it looks crooked, but it's not. I'm going to straighten that out. Huh, maybe it is. Let's see if we can work with it. Okay, so I have a little bit of water on here. And we're going to look at this. Okay, so you can see a lot, right? I am going to put a little bit of yellow on my on my brush so you can see what I'm doing, the brush strokes. And I'm I'm just tapping this in. It's pulp like looking, right? Tap, 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 tap. And do you you know, and I'm going outside my pencil lines too. What I'm going to do is try and make it not look so mechanically drawn out, have, have a little bit more of a natural form to it. And here we go. Okay, drop a little bit of orange in. And you can just bring that orange and let it, let it move, move. It's really hot here today, so my paper is drying totally quickly. So. Good thing, bad thing. That's a good thing if you're on 300 pound and, and it's warm. If you have, if you live in an area where your pigments dry really fast and you're doing wet into wet, 300 pound is a good one because it holds the water a little bit longer and stays wetter a little bit longer. So there you have it. So there, there it is. Not just tap, tap, boom. And then you're going to do that all the way around, right? I'll do one more. Okay, let's start with some yellow. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Okay. This is a big one. I don't know why it's so big. Maybe we can find a happy place, happy medium where it can stop. You know, it, if you have an orange at home, I don't have one, Ross. I would cut it in half to show you. Um, but if you do, cut, cut it in half and maybe you can, you know, just look at it and go, well, okay, I could use that technique, but you know, I don't like the photo that's in front of me, so I'm going to use what I can see, and I'm just going to go go for it, you know. Um, or you can just go for it. <laughs> you don't even have to use this technique. This is the, the best way I know how to, um, you know, do the inside of an orange, you know, because because when I paint, I I guess I paint a lot of different subjects, but you know, painting fruit cut open fruit is of uh, you know few and far between obviously um and and uh who knows maybe this is something that you want to incorporate into your um body of work okay so with that being said now i want to look at this portion because i know this is like where everyone was feeling well not everyone but some uh, some of you I, what i did notice the common thread amongst you so I'm wondering what the heck did I say in my book that had you all um, painting these thin lines this way, this way, and this way? Because I know that was the beginning of the darks. Um, let me see if I can straighten this um, level there. Okay. That was the beginning of the darks. Uh, you know, we're finding our way, but that doesn't mean you know, one thin line, one thin line, one thin line. Go thick and thin. You can you can soften one side of the edge, so it 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 blends in. You don't want these dark black movements like this guy here. You know, these guys you just kind of um, you dissolve an edge, dissolve an edge, make it a shape, not a line. So that's 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 one of my biggest tips that I could give all of you. Um, I'm going to switch palettes to um, my blues and greens. Okay. That, oops, I'm making all these noise. Okay, it's okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Okay, here we go. Got it. Now, this is my palette from, whoa, what did I paint last? Uh, background. Background. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and I'll just um, get some green, uh, some of the Windsor Green Blue Shade. 
going to mix that up, add a little bit of water to it, and I have a nice, um, nice green ready to go right there. Okay, and I'm also going to mix up a little puddle of the uh, blue. Okay, the Windsor blue, and um, which is nice because it has some Windsor green in it from the background. And um, there you go, boom, those two colors. One, two. Okay, let's concentrate on that. And let's think about this. Now, I, I don't even have the reference photo in front of me because it's a lousy reference photo. No, because just because I don't. Um, because sometimes, okay, when I get to the stage of a painting, and I know I've said this in critiques, but when I get to the stage of the painting, it's when you put your reference photo down and you look at the painting as a whole and you think, I'm not going to go by what Joyce says. I'm going to go by what I, I feel I know is best for my painting at this point in time. Um, because, because the painting changes as the artist applies the steps, but however, it always changes. And that, that I would hope that it would change, right? Because then you get the opportunity to find your own way through and play with these darks and lights and go, oh my gosh, okay, this is going to really punch it up or that's gonna really going to punch I remember the first time when I painted this and it was, I believe it was a clear, clear uh, orange juice squeezer and I was just learning how to paint glass and I painted it and I kept painting the darks, but I, I was tiptoeing around because I was kind of scared because I kept overworking these glass uh, still lifes that I was trying to teach myself how to do. And all of a sudden I stood back and I went, holy moly, it's transparent. You can see through it. You know, it looks like, it looks like the oranges. Yeah. And it not only had uh, the transparency that it was just working for, um, it had a lot of liveliness to it. The orange, you know, it was just one of those moments where I went, got it. I understand it now. And I think what I'm trying to say is that that's how you discover also is by playing with your painting. Once you get to this point, you've done so much work, right? And you're, you, you might be a little nervous. Oh, I don't want to blow it. I don't want to blow it. However, you won't because look at what I'm doing. I'm just adding. I'm adding. I'm adding. I'm adding. But it, as long as you don't. You know, all you have to do is thread your blues through. It thread your blues through right here. Find another area. Back again. And again, you've done all the hard work, and now your painting is just ready for you to, you, you get to detail it and, and just have some fun with it. And, you know, maybe there's some areas where you could go really, really dark. And make it pop even more so than, than the, um, the lesson in the book. And you go, oh wow, Joyce didn't see this. Cause I've seen my students do that in a workshop um, and online too. People will see something that I totally missed. And they'll say, and I'll say, wow, that is so cool. What made you do that? And they'll point something out in the reference photo or they'll just say, it just made sense. And, and, and I'll see students work and I'll be like, I wish I did that. However, that's because, you know, you just kind of, your painting gets to a certain point where you can just go ahead and play it up. Did you see how I got that nice and dark? And so it has that, that those darks help, just help make it transparent. Now, here's another trick that I can show you. Um... Here we go. So what I was trying to show you guys on the last critique, which I didn't think came over, it just didn't seem like it came off very well. So what I do is I take your JPEGs, I print them out, and then I paint right on the paper so I can um, so I can show you what I'm talking about, you know, and, and demonstrate right on the paper. And sometimes the paper absorbs the pigments a little weird, or sometimes I get a little heavy handed and I go, oh man, so, um, and that's no big deal. I can just print out another one and paint it again. But, um, and then sometimes I feel like I don't want to direct you too far away from your own style. 
So that's, you know, so it's a, it's really, you know, it's just really, um, I don't know. If someone came to me and said, I have no style, I have no vision, I have nothing, but I want to paint. I'd say, okay, and then I'd walk them all the way through, through a painting from beginning to end. I do, I do private lessons that way. So, and, um, but now, but then when I have students such as yourselves that really are enthusiastic and they really, and you all have your own wonderful way, um, your style is there. So I don't want to discourage, I don't want to move you too far in one direction. You know, um, I, I love that you, you want to paint the still lives, um, and learn some more about, about technique and all, but techniques, um, you know, they're, they're great to learn because then it's like having a nice full box of art supplies. <laughs> you have this arsenal of, of techniques that you can pull out at any time. However, um, when you're learning the techniques, if you if you forget who you are as an artist, you know, then then it's like, wow, I don't want, I just don't want that for you guys. I want you guys to stay who you are and be true to the things that you love about watercolor. Okay, because I've I've taken workshops before in um or in my earlier days, and I'd come home and I'd be confused because you admire somebody's work so much to a certain extent, and then and then you're like, well, you know what? She does it this way, so I have to do it this way because I want my, my work to look like hers or his. However, that's great when you study under somebody, but don't forget who you are because you have a uniqueness about you as well. Just because, you know, uh, Joyce Faulkner, you know, has been, has a book, so that must mean that she knows, you know, she knows everything there is to know about, you know, watercolor, painting glass. Well, sorry to tell you, I don't, because there's other people out there. I've seen their work, and I go, wow, they really know how to, you know, they, they really know how to paint a still life with the glass in it, and it's, um, you know, that's it's going to happen time and time again. However, what I do know about are the are your darks, how, how important they are, and I'm going to show you this right here, right now, and right here, right under this orange right here, I want to, see how I darken that? Doesn't that look cool? That, I love that. So you can take a darker, darker value in little key places, and this happens in cut crystal, it happens in glass all the time. But you just have to wait till you get to this point. Or sometimes you can knock it in and it won't make sense, but then when you get the surrounding um, shapes, it does. This is how you get that transparent look because I'm threading those darks through. See that? And it makes a huge difference. Huge. That's what I was trying to show you or I was hoping you'd pick up on. But I wasn't too worried about it that I, on your first critique for this. I wasn't too worried about it because this is like detail stuff. So, um, yeah. So... But the cool thing about knowing that this is what's going to happen while you're painting um, this, you know, combination of, of glass is that, yeah, you get to go back in and you get to do all these fun things. Now, for those of you with those dark lines, you have those dark lines, right? And that meaning right here and here. Some of you have painted a line and a line and a line and a line, right? Well, I'm thinking, oh, it's just dark all by itself and it's distracting. However, you can come in with your dark line and you can make it a broader shape, turn it into a different shape, just make it disappear a little bit. Okay. I learned that in my, when I was in class, I was taking a, um, it was a, just a drawing class, it was a charcoal pencil type class. And, but, um, the instructor says, I, when I was, um, drawing and I put all, he goes, you put all your darks in first. I remember him saying, and, and, uh, 
He said, and if you run out of time during class, go ahead and just sketch it out. Put your darks in first and then find your lightest values. He goes, and then everything else will come together, even if the still life's not in front of you and you have to finish it at home, which I thought was crazy anyway, because, you know, we're supposed to be painting right from, from um, a live still life. Anyway, I, that's what I did. I put my darks in, and I, then I put my, you know, I was working with my lights. But my darks were just like you guys putting your, your line, line, line. He goes, make that dark, d dissolve those lines. And I, dissolve those lines. I thought, what does that mean? I don't know how to dissolve a line. And and he said, just go like this. And so, so basically what he did was... Gonna, um, here, let me get another another canvas so you can see. Okay. Now, you know, those words, those words have just stuck with me forever and ever. So let's say it's a pencil class, and, and I had these, um, it's a graphite class. You know, I'm working in graphite, and, and you can do it in, in watercolor, too. So um, I had this dark line, and I knew... The, the item, you know, whatever's behind uh, a, a subject, you know, you can make it darker to make this, you know, be in the foreground, middle ground, background. So that's that was my rule of thumb when I was drawing. And here, so you, he said, dissolve it, just take it. And what he did with the crap, graphite was he took it, rubbed it, rubbed it, rubbed it, and then until it came light, you know. That's what he meant by dissolving it, dissolving one edge. You can dissolve an edge anywhere and just kind of, and what happens is it becomes part of the shape, not, it's not just a line all on its own that's um, hanging out and sticking out like a sore thumb. It's, it's part, part of your process. It's part of your still life. It, see? And then you can go dun to dun, just like this. Boom. I hope these videos are okay because I don't even play them back and look at them, um, which maybe I should, but um, there's, you know, I keep shooting so many of them that it's like, I'm just going to trust that they're okay because I'm just showing it to you guys and um, maybe I'll, I'll release it to, to, you know, out to, so other people can see it. But for right now, it's, it's for you guys because you guys picked it, come to this class and this is just for you. Okay, so see how you dissolve, when I say dissolve a line, dissolve it. And then, you, and then you can let it dry, and then you can you can go back in, and if you have to darken it, you have to darken it. Boom, boom, see, like so. Okay? Okay. Good. Detailing, detailing. Okay. So we've got the pulp, we've got, you know, this, this big old, the rind there. Um, and you can tweak... Um, this is another thing that I showed some of you, glazing, glazing. Don't forget to glaze, you can glaze. See, and that's another reason why I don't like uh, critiquing midway through a painting, because I don't know how far you guys got. It's like, it. I know you, you guys want to post it on Fridays because that's, that's the assignment. However, you know, I just don't know if you're finished totally with the glass. Because we really never are finished until until um, we get the background in, we're always going to go back to the um, to the vase, you know, just like we do with the onions and the garlic. So, and there you have it, right there, kids. Okay, nice, right? So glazing is is a wonderful thing too. You're not. Don't worry. Glazing is not going to do anything but enhance. It enhances and it, and it and it kind of brings a lot of those fun shapes together. There you go. You know, and you think, oh no, I'm losing my light. Well, not really, because what's going to happen? This is going to dry, and then and then if you feel that you've lost your light, you know, I remember when we first started a couple weeks ago. You're all like, oh, I can, I can lift, I can lift. But really, you don't have to because as soon as you put down another dark, you've got yourself, there you go, 
Okay, so go start white. And you can glaze and you can have fun and you can, you know, drop in some dark skin here while it's wet. And this is your time to play with your painting and just explore. Okay, so that's it for now. I'm going to finish that up. And, um, however, one, one more thing. If you do this, then you have to act kind of do it in several, not every, you don't have to do it all the way around, but bring like, okay, I'm not going to leave you hanging with just that funny little square right there. Um, like right here, you know, just kind of spread the wealth. Okay. You don't have to do it everywhere. Just so it doesn't, so see it now it has that blue, <laughs> a nice blue movement right there. And, um, Do you have to do it just no it doesn't have to look just like that just just kind of make it look like uh, you know it's another ribbon of, of blues coming through this guy's sticking out like a sore thumb what are we going to do about it i don't know you know choice is yours but i think i'll just put a little bit of color on it not a whole lot there you go okay you guys so that's it signing off and have fun paint Paint, 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 and I'm so proud of you. This has been quite a treat for me having you guys as my students. So, so, um, okay, here we go. So, bye for now, and um, the next video is going to be about varnishing. Okay, and I'm going to send you all the information on the 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 products that I'll be using too. Okay, okay, good luck. Talk to you later.